Welcome to Lenny's Place presented by Hillendale Stallions. We are at the Kentucky Derby for this episode. If you're as old as I am, you might remember the commercial where you could double your pleasure, double your fun by chewing double mint gum. This is the Derby of doubles and triples and quadruples. Trainer Todd Pletcher, four horses in the Derby. Bob Baffert, two horses in the Derby. Ahmed Zayed owns three horses in the Derby. Windstar Farm, two horses in the Derby. Stone Street Stables, two horses in the Derby. I wouldn't be surprised if there's a jockey out there who's gonna ride two horses in this race somehow. Mom and Pop, where, where have you gone? All right, we're gonna run down the field for you a little bit here with a little tidbit on everybody. International star, owner Ken Ramsey, totally unexpected. He's got 23 two-year-olds for next year's Derby. Didn't think he was gonna be in this year's Derby. Dortmund, known as Big D by his connections. Trainer Bob Baffert said the horse was short going into the Robert Lewis, his first race of the year. When Baffert saw him come back on and win that race, he knew he had something special. Carpe diem, gorgeous specimen, fluid stride, question is the mentality. Does he leave his race in the paddock or in the post parade or at the gate? American Pharaoh was actually galloping with a patch on his foot earlier this week. For those conspiracy theorists, there you go. Frosted throat uh, procedure led to his big win in the wood. He's on the improve. Mubtahaj, owned by Sheikh Mohammed's cousin. No Lasix, no problem. Materiality, his owners come from New Mexico. Same as mine, that bird. El Kabir, up and down. Anybody who saw that maiden breaker at Saratoga last year remembers, wow, has a chance. Upstart, son of Flatter, who is a son of AP Indy. Flatter ran very well here at Churchill Downs. Far right, come from behind her, has had some tough trips, broke his maiden at Churchill by five lengths. It's a knockout. Don't go to sleep on him. He was nose and nose with the stable mate materiality in their work leading up to the Derby. Firing line, the horse that passed Dortmund twice this year, got pipped on the wire both times, might be the most overlooked contender. Danzig Moon, owner John Oxley going for a Monarcos style upset. Sneaky good second in the bluegrass. War story, trouble getting out of the gate, that means he's got to come from the clouds. Ten Sender, Playbill's Phil Bursch, has a 17 hand monster who he named after. King Charlemagne's noble steed. Stanford, beautifully bred. Can he carry the speed? I don't know. Mr. Z, a typical Lucas long shot. A race every month. No win since the maiden breaker. Ocho, Ocho, Ocho. Owned by Darren Pearson's DP Racing. Hmm, last year it was DAP. Bolo, haven't seen the same kick on dirt yet that we saw on the turf. And Keen Ice gets in late from the same connections that brought you Patty Prado, third in the Derby, and Doolahan. We will be back with the pick from those 20 right after this. He's conquered Canada, now he's taking the States by storm. This is trainer Mark Cassie. Mark, welcome to Lenny's Place. Thank you, good to be here. Mark, uh, we'll have Danzig Moon starting in the Kentucky Derby. Mark, you bought him for 160 grand as a yearling. What'd you like about him? Well, I love Malibu Moon. Um, you know, he's been very good to us. He was a Canadian bred, but you know, this horse has a really strong family. Yeah, you know, it's a Phipps it's a, family. It's a Phipps family, yeah. And um, we're always looking for mile and a quarter horses, and I figured this horse has got a mile and a quarter written all over him. He ran, a, I thought, a really sneaky good race in the bluegrass. He was wide the whole way. I talked to Julie, and he ran on second behind Carpe Diem. What did he show you in that race? Well, he kind of showed us what we thought he was. You know, he was very disappointed in the Tampa Bay Derby. But he, he's, this is a horse that tells you when he feels good. He's a, you know, he's a mean horse. He bites everybody, he jumps around. And he came out of the uh, Tampa Bay Derby very low key, laying down and everything. So we knew something was up. We took some blood work and sure enough, he was fighting a virus. I think that he's probably, you know, he went into the bluegrass good, but he's probably even a little stronger here for this, yeah. for the Derby. And you got Julian Leperu on him, come from behind, great come from behind rider. I know he thought there was more there than he showed even in the bluegrass. 
Um, uh, you know, he did. You could tell even in the latter part. He knew he wasn't going to get carpe yeah. diem, and he, yeah. so he kind of hand wrote him. He galloped out well, and uh, you know, unfortunately for us, good for everybody else. It's a great derby, you know. <laughs> yeah. It's a great derby. So, uh, you know, there's a lot of tough horses. He's worked well here at Churchill. He's also run well here at Churchill. How important is that for you to, to know, to have that in the bank that he likes the track here? Well, you know, I was saying to somebody today, you know, this is home for him. Yeah. He, he you know, somebody was saying he looks so well galloping today, and he's at home. Everybody else is coming to play in his house. Yeah, yeah. Is your owner, John Oxley, giving you tips on how to win the Derby? No, I wish he would, though. <laughs> He's a little better at it than I am. You know, they say it's a seven-year itch. This is a 14-year itch, okay, so maybe, so we maybe just it works. One. Yeah, yeah, you just skipped one. How, how is it for you to be here and have a derby contender? What's it like for you? Well, you know, for me, this is all I've ever wanted to do. You know, kids grow up wanting to do this and do that. I always knew what I wanted to do. Um, I was here when Secretariat won the Derby, and uh, so it's special. And, and this is where I, I started my career at Churchill Downs. So. Uh, very special. All right, Mark Cassie, good luck with Danzig Moon on Saturday. Thank you. All right, thank you. A lot of people are going to spend the Derby week figuring out how to beat American Pharaoh. I will not be one of them. The Derby's been kind to favorites lately. American Pharaoh was the best two-year-old last year. He's done nothing to show me that he's not the best three-year-old coming up to this race. Sorry for the chalk, but American Pharaoh wins the Kentucky Derby. As far as a live long shot, I think Danzig Mood is going to start passing horses from the back. Watch out for him to get a piece of it. Uh, I want to thank our viewers. want to thank our friends at Hillendale Stallions. want to wish everybody a great Derby. Enjoy it, everybody. See you next time.